Hello guys. If you want to watch basketball and other sports, click the link in description below and create your account to watch in high quality. Don't miss the game. Enjoy your time. A foul and during the penalty, that'll be two shots. And Bede continuously makes a regular procession to the free throw line. He's amongst league leaders in free throw attempts. And, and Chris, I understand what he's saying. He's got his arms out. That wouldn't be a shooting foul, but because they're in the bonus, that's what makes it a shooting foul, that rip through. So as much, move, right? yeah, as much as the rip through has been taken away from players, Right? It was taken away as a shooting foul if the team wasn't in the bonus. But now this is a foul. You can't have your arm there. And defensive players have to make that adjustment. We've seen it with Tim Duncan. We've seen it with James Harden. So many great players know how to throw that arm out. And Bede knocks down the second foul shot. Dallas has misfired on its last eight shots in a row. Mavericks have actually lost their last two games. Doncic from deep off the mark. They lost at home here in overtime to OKC. Luke Dort got hot in OT with 14 points in that game. And then before that, losers in Orlando against their former assistant coach, Jamal Mosley. And beat on the repost. They double team him this time. Shot clock down to four. Seth Curry's got to get busy here. Good contest by Green. A better shot. By Seth Curry, a long two falls. Just elite shooting there. Sometimes when there's two, three seconds on the shot clock, you have plenty of time. Way not to rush by Seth Curry and getting to a little step back three point. They double team Luca. Good corner find to Bullock. Inside, a lot of contact. That's going to be a block against the 76ers and Isaiah Joe. Timeout on the floor. Sixers with the lead when we come back the leaders in the East in the loss column. There it is. Philadelphia behind Miami and Chicago by mere percentage points. Chicago in Indianapolis tonight against the Pacers as Bullock knocks down the free throw. Now Philly fans, don't, don't, don't <laughs> come at me, but I uh -oh. still believe this is not going to end well. No, I, I, I think winning a championship is one of the, the hardest things, and I think that's known. But unless they bring in somebody or unless they're able to trade Ben Simmons, it doesn't mean that they can't make it to a conference finals, can't have a great season, and that Joel can't win the MVP. But I just think if they don't get him playing or get something for him, right. it's going to be hard to win a championship this year. You need everything hitting on all cylinders. And speaking of all like cylinders, Tobias. Tobias Harris knocks down the pull-up. I just think it's going to be extremely difficult when you look at the depth and like a Milwaukee that's pushing on all cylinders, their entire roster. Here's Bullock, corner three, a little bit short, but he was fouled by Seth Curry on the attempt. So that should be three free throws just to put a period on your point Richard when you have Embiid as healthy as he is that's something that you want to take advantage of too you should and I think that's been kind of the sentiment that like hey you're playing great you don't need to take something or get something in return you want to get the player that you felt like you deserve in Ben Simmons or something for him right uh, but right now if you're talking about a fully healthy Miami team a fully healthy Milwaukee team obviously Brooklyn's been struggling right now but that's another team that they have the capability to be fully healthy at least on the road so I just look at this Philly team and know that they can win a lot of games and I know Joel has the ability to win the MVP but winning a championship and winning four rounds you might want to fully load the you might want to fully load the roster. Bullock knocks down the free throw for the Mavericks, an 81% free throw shooter on the season. Last 15 games, he's actually been the team leader in plus minus for what it's worth. Luca's next best. But he's had, as I said, good offensive output in the last four games, averaging just under 18. But how much does this Dallas team miss? Tim Hardaway Jr. Well, he, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., he's just one of those guys that obviously he sprays to the floor, does a lot of things. Uh, for me, I just think Tim Hardaway is one of those guys that can create buckets and get, he just brings a level of energy for this team. Obviously, offensive talent, but, you know, I think they're fine. Guys are holding down the floor. Uh, Andre Drummond off a nice dive drop from Tobias Harris, and now a steal by Thibault. What else is new? 
Isaiah Joe. Drummond keeping it alive underneath. Oh man, he put the Mavericks roster in the weight room there. Great effort from Andre Drummond, who had a 16 point, 23 rebound game on Monday in their game against Memphis. Great hands by Harris. It went to Bullock, though. Left it short, and Drummond with another rebound. He's really been a great backup center for this oh my God. team. Best backup center in the league. Here's Curry. Tough contested shot. And the Mavericks get the miss. Luka's going to walk it up. Mavericks have gone 0 for 10 from the field in their last 10 attempts. This is where they score, just because you said it. There it is. Not quite. I'll tell you what, they're really making Luka work at the offensive end here tonight. Thibel has been sticking to him inextricably for most of the night so far. Luka going to go to the free throw line. He's just two of seven tonight, seven points. And, you know, I was talking about Thibel and his great defense. An interesting nugget of information is that he and Marquise Chris were freshmen at Washington, a class that also included DeJounte right. Murray. DeJounte Murray, look. Yeah, sit. all the pros right now. Pretty good program. Washington has one of the most underrated programs in this league. When you talk about guys that come from that area, there's so many great players that come from the Seattle area, the Washington oh. area, just in the surrounding that Pacific Northwest. A lot of basketball players come from that area, and it's one of those things that they take a ton of pride in, but it doesn't always get mentioned. Luka goes 0 for 2. He got the ball back six seconds to go. That's his patented fadeaway, and it's nothing but net. Harris quickly up court, and that's going to be the end of a prolonged, and I mean prolonged, look at your watches, folks. It's 10.30 local time, 11.30 Eastern, and it all started with Doncic with a discerning eye. He made the shot, but he said, you know what? Something just doesn't look right. And you know what? Grudgingly, he was right. <laughs> and Luca appropriately ended the quarter as well. Back with a second after this. It's time for our coaches interview brought to you by Adobe Experience Cloud. We're here with Doc Rivers, the head coach of the Sixers. Doc, you've been around this league as a player and a coach for a long time. Have you ever seen anything like that 40 plus minute delay we've had? I don't know if 40. I've seen delays, but that was a long one. That's for sure. Um, you know, you don't even know what to do. Do you warm up? Do you shoot? I mean, it's Fortunately, Joel had two free throws. That was a good part. Yeah, and you're up nine, certainly, at this point. What do you like most of what you've seen from your team thus far? I, I liked our pace overall. I mean, giving up that free throw rebound, I'm not a little upset by that. But I like our pace. we got to keep the pace up in this game. Doc, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, George, and offensively, boy, the 76ers shot 57% from the field against a very much improved Dallas team defensively this year. They're rated number five in the league in defense as Niang drills one from downtown. And what's weird is that we've seen not, not, the, not the road team struggle after the break. It's been the home team, one for 11 since that break. So I'm really curious to see how Dallas is going to settle in here in the second quarter. Vinny Smith cross court finds a Josh Green. And the Arizona product misfires. That was for you, Richard. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we got a whistle and it's going to come back the other way. Oh, I stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Stepped on the sideline. Trey Burke brings it into the front court for the Mavericks. Lutra begins this second period on the bench. Green with the dribble hand off to Brunson. Brunson behind the screen, a little bit strong. Knocked out of bounds. And Courtney Kirkland says it'll come back the other way to Philadelphia. 76ers coming into the game tonight, 31 and 20 overall. A big win against Memphis at home without Joel Embiid. Does it something about the, the depth of this team and Maxi blows by Powell. Oh, a little bit of contact. Yeah, that's going to be a foul underneath against Finney Smith. Yeah, that's one of those times. Normally, 
Normally, Andre Drummond is jumping on a trampoline down there when a lob, when a lob gets thrown to him. So, unless that's a reverse trampoline, uh, that's a foul. Well, Andre Drummond has been extremely active in this ball game at both ends of the floor while Embiid gets a breather. He's got Finney Smith posted up. Missed the layup right out to Green. Isaiah Joe from deep. And the Mavericks finish the possession with the defensive board. Dallas has stalled out right now offensively. Shooting just 27% for the game. Brunson playing with his food out front against Drummond. Finney Smith from deep. And they are now one for their last 14. Maxey with the mid-range jumper. Good. Boy, Tyrese Maxey is playing some great basketball for the 76ers and doing it in the spirit of gratitude and appreciation. He's a young man whose home almost burned down totally on Christmas Eve while he was with his family, his father, his mom, his uncles and aunts, his nieces and nephews. A couple of people smelled fire from somewhere. They stepped outside and saw big flames bursting from one of the upper floors out through the window. It was too late to try and put it out. And by the time they did get everyone out of the house safely, nobody was injured. But he lost a lot of sentimental personal items, but it's really kind of sent his life into a little bit of chaos. Trying to find living quarters and getting settled again, but it hasn't bothered him on the floor. Green from the corner missed everything. No, and, and look, for Maxi, everyone speaks so highly of him on and off the floor. As you see Trey Burke wow. with a little speedster left-hander. Dallas Mavericks loving to see that right now. They just need to get back on the board. The worst part for Maxi about that house fire was that he was disappointed that his younger family members didn't have as many presents to open the following day. But he was still grateful for everyone's safety. Drummond going to be called for the offensive foul. Wow. So I got a question. Now, this is highly, this is purely hypothetical. Go ahead. And we're going to talk about it after this replay here by Drummond. I think he was a little bit frustrated after not. I, that's just a good, strong move to me. That's what it looked like. Do you think the Dallas Mavericks are regretting changing that hoop yet? Hey, <laughs> might, you might you know, have something there. I'm just saying, like, you know. They, they should have given that one to Philadelphia. Sometimes it's the old janky hoops are the ones that, that all the balls go in. There you go. Brunson really sold that foul. And that's going to put him on the free throw line. They have been ice cold, as cold as it is, as it is outside, where temperatures right now about 27 degrees feels like about 12. Jalen Brunson going to the free throw line for the Dallas Mavericks. The guy that really established himself as one of the leaders of this team in the 10 games that Luka missed with an ankle injury. Averaging 16 points a game on the season along with six assists. Well, we have a special NBA Sunday matchup coming your way as the Hawks are in Dallas right here to face the Mavericks. 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN as well as the ESPN app. And man, if you haven't missed it. The Atlanta Hawks, Richard, yeah. have turned the corner a little bit here. And man, Trey Young was ice cold. And I mean that cold is in like a good way. Oh, okay. The other day. Thank you for specifying yeah, no, that. He was no, cold blooded cold, like ice tray cold. Maxi getting into the paint and gets fouled by Dwight Powell. As everyone is prone to do, he says he didn't touch him. Yeah, but Dwight, Natalie Sago disagreed. You know, Dwight Powell's one of those. Oh, he didn't touch him. That foul was on Trey Burke. Yep. Foul was called on Burke. So he was right. So he was right. You, he was like, you were right. You didn't touch him. You didn't touch him, but you know who did? Trey Burke. Actually, at the free throw line. What's it been like, do you think, for Doc Rivers to reimagine his team in the absence of Ben Simmons and have Maxie the guy 
primarily at the point a lot of times. And he's still learning that position. Yeah, he is. And I, again, when we talk about positionless basketball, we're seeing their seven-foot MVP candidate uh, center bring the ball up the floor. And then they have multiple guys, whether it's Seth Curry bringing the ball up. So they have a lot of guys. Max is just somebody that they're trying to teach him how to play the point guard spot because he's so talented and he's gravitated towards every piece of knowledge that they have been offering him. Really been up to the challenge. One against Memphis, he had a season high 33 bumps and on the blow by, probing. A little quick shot inside, and he gets it to fall. Dallas has trailed for most of this game. It's 42 to 32, and the Mavericks unable to make a move in these non embed minutes. Niang has helped out doing some heavy lifting from outside with the three. George Niang out of Iowa State for the jumper. He's got six. That's out of bounds. It'll come back to the 76ers as Doncic gets ready to come back into the ball game for Dallas. It looks like they're trying to run the same play again, which is basically they let Drummond bring up the ball and then there's a dribble handoff a choice on his role okay so they're they're you know when guys are kind of saying spin it again uh, that that's the same so let's see if they try and run the exact same play and try and get a different option off of it Frank Nilakina in the ball game as well for the Mavericks yeah Drummond handoff again now he rolls and now he gets a layup high off glass too late for the defense but that's what they're talking about being a point guard that's the next level we got something let's run the play again because I see something else that is the evolution of a young player understanding the point guard position we're gonna foul against Isaiah Joe and then Tyrese Maxey here he made the pass before this he gets a little right hand layup running the same play mm. getting multiple options right now philly is rolling let's check out who's playing with confidence brought to you by jackson hewitt i tell you matisse Thibel should have a lot of confidence the way he's defended some of the top guns in the nba this year including luca tonight richard well and he has that reputation for a great defender because not only is he quick laterally but he's got great hands look at him poking his hand in there without foul getting back around showing his hand just making sure that luca is always looking for him you know who he is he's that free safety that quarterbacks have to look look for at all points in time you have to misdirect your eyes because he's always there he's already stolen an inbounds play Here's Brunson from deep. Got it. Mavericks still trailing by 12 as we approach the midway point of the second quarter. And beat in the ball game. Nine points, nine rebounds already on double double alert. And B drawing a lot of traffic out to Isaiah Joe. Kicked out his legs. That's going to be an offensive foul against Isaiah Joe. And Seth Curry getting ready to come back in. This one looked pretty obvious. Right? Yeah, that's the right call. Good pass there by Joel. And then here, Joe. He, you know, that's an unnatural movement. <laughs> <Yeah, I think. laughs> and that's his fourth personal foul already. Wow. On a night when uh, 76ers are without Shake Milton, of course, again, and Perkon Korkmaz also unavailable due to injury. Doncic guarded by Danny Green right now, and Doncic immediately scores. Look, I, I'm going to be really honest. The Dallas Mavericks are lucky to be down only 10 right now. Philadelphia a little delay set with Embiid out front. Niang on the drive. Got it to go. Niang with a couple of perimeter J's in a drive game. Yeah, well, Doc Rivers described him as an agitator. He's one of those guys that's always in the fray doing the little things. He actually likes kind of being a villain in certain moments. So he's a good guy that you want on your team. Eight points in six minutes. Brunson working against Maxey. Lost him on the screen. Drew the foul. And Jalen Brunson. Stunt like his daddy right now. Rick, former NBA vet. And here, Luca coming off that little dribble handoff. He has the option, and that's the fake. He throws that fake to make Joel Embiid feel that he's going to throw the lob uh, to Powell. 
Joel slides off, and then that gives him the opportunity for a little floater. So just those little ball fakes that Luca is so good at mm. while doing his Euro, getting other players involved. Brunson knocks down the free throw, and Thibault coming back in for Danny Green. No doubt going to lock on to Doncic again. You know, Luca to two for six from the field while he was in, and uh, Doncic right now four of nine. Brunson is going to be an unrestricted free agent Woo. at the end of this season. Woo. And his price tag is going up. Woo. 11 in this quarter. What's that brick at right now? <laughs> Increasing. Increasing. <laughs> Maxi over to Niang. And B tried to post up. No foul called on Powell. Luca. Guarded by Niang in the cross switch. In transition. Luca got him on his hip. Tough pass in traffic. Never got to Powell. Out of bounds. Indeed, looking at Natalie Sago, saying he was held on that post up. Ten point ball game. Under five minutes to go. Dallas baseline out of bounds. Doncic doing the honors. Bullock with a quick three pull. And it's Potter. And for such an elite shooter, he's got kind of a low arcing shot. He is like everywhere he goes, he has just been a dead eye shooter. But when you watch it shot, quick release, he's got the height, but it's got a kind of a, a, a surprising low arc for such a great shooter. Tobias Harris had it rattle out, gets it back. One more to Seth Curry. And Bead hits it back out on the repost. Deep position. There's nothing. Automatic. That's like a drill. There's nothing you can do. He's doing a drill out there. Richard. He's so big. Throws it back out to, to Seth. Resets the defense. And then the next time he gets it, he goes quick before the double team. That's just elite basketball IQ there. And Whoa! with the alley-oop. Dwight Powell disturbing the peace. We are watching an absolute basketball clinic by two of the best players in the NBA. Luka Doncic and Joel Embiid. Look, before he faked and, and faked out Joel Embiid, this one throws a lob to Dwight Powell. Easy two-point finish. Going back into the time machine this week in NBA history, February 7th, 1999, Dallas at Golden State. Do you recognize number 41? The hairstyle was a little bit different. A cross-court find from Sean Bradley and Dirk made his first field goal, career bucket right there. Finished the game with 16 points on 6 of 10. Mavs won the game in double overtime. His number in the Raptors. Got a statue outside here at American Airlines Center. And one of the greatest to ever do it. And Bede, meanwhile, battering and bruising that Mavericks defense inside. He'll go back to the free throw line. Not sure what you do with this. <laughs> There's nothing you can do with it. There's absolutely nothing. And look, Dwight Powell is probably more of a hybrid power forward than anything right. so he's doing his best he he comes out he plays with a ton of energy all the time but Joel Embiid is tough for the biggest most dominant centers Anthony Davis Rudy Gobert guys that are just you know next level and here there's just absolutely nothing you can do about that especially now that he's raised his game with his passing yeah. so now if you try and double team and if you try and do that his skill level is so high that he just picks teams apart Richard has really put the work in. For example, before a game against Sacramento last week, he not only did one, but two separate workouts prior to the game, getting shots up. He's been consuming copious amounts of videotape, watching a lot of film, making himself better. Just a guy who's showing the results of his labor right now. Finney Smith from the corner. And Harris, who already has a double-double, by the way, with 11 points and 10 rebounds into Embiid. Tried to hit Harris, got it finally. Harris inside through the contact for the bucket. And you got to give credit to Doc Rivers as Joel Embiid has improved his game. Their movement around him has been a focus. And just making sure that as they double team him, they are able to find ways to still get themselves involved. Right. Embiid falls to the court. 
That's going to be the fourth team foul against the Mavericks. Misspoke a moment ago. Tobias Harris only has two rebounds. It's Embiid with the double double. Every time he falls hard, an entire city holds its collective breath. At, at this point in time, I'm going to say an entire league holds okay. their breath yes. because, and it's true. Yeah, the yes. Philadelphia 76ers fan, but them he first. is, yeah, hit them first. But he is one of those guys that the, that the entire league, you know, and NBA fans enjoy watching. You watch the growth, you watch the maturity of Joel and B turn into one of the most dominant players that we've seen in this era. Trying to post up Marquise Chris. They double team him. Luca comes on the double. It goes out of bounds off of Doncic's foot. Shot clock down to five. As Bolton Morjanovic comes into the ball game. And look at the number of games Embiid has missed in his career. And we talked about it. Jason Kidd said he was going to throw every center at Joel Embiid. We've seen Powell. We've seen Chris. And now a standing ovation for Bobon. With seven foot 14 inches. Counts as two centers, right? And it doesn't me... matter to Joel Embiid, who says, I don't care how many centers you have. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you this. As soon as, as soon as Joel was like, oh, you guys are bringing in a new center for a standing ovation. Take this bucket with you. Mm. Doncic kicks it out to the corner. Vinny Smith is at home. Tobias Harris into the front court. He and Boban were teammates in Detroit with the Clippers and also for a while in Philadelphia. And Bead dribbles right into the mid-range in this spot. Got the Bobby and Toby show on the floor, albeit for opposing sides this time. Doncic, tough bucket off glass. And I Luka now with 13. And I want to see Joel still go into that post against Boban. I know you can take him out on the floor and use your skill work, but you are also more physical and dominant than him. Coming downhill right at the big man, draws the foul, and Embiid walks right to the free throw line. It's just business for him. Yeah, don't don't just settle for threes. I know you knocked down that three. You come for that jump, but go at the big man. Right there, as we talked about here, hits him with a little drive. That's the follow through the initial ball the initial ball he got ball but the follow through that's the foul you No know, and beats what 27 years old. I remember him telling me when he first came to the United States Went to an Academy down in Florida as a teenager. He said he could barely speak or understand English He learned English by listening to Rick Ross and that's, one, rap stuff. that's that's one way to learn English yeah. Diversified yeah. colloquialisms too yes. <laughs> Jargon so to speak. Yeah and one of his first practices when he was at Kansas, he got dunked on by Tarek Black, a teammate. And after that practice, he went to his head coach, Bill Self, and said, Coach, I'm not sure I'm good enough to play here. Maybe I should redshirt. And Self looked at him and said, are you kidding me? You're going to be a top three pick in a few months. <laughs> yes. It's come a long way. And he's put the work in. It hasn't happened by chance. And Bede on cue with the steal. Gets on the deck. Great hustle out to Fiebel, over to Green. This has to end in a basket, almost. <laughs> Doesn't have to do anything, but you love to see the hustle by the big fella. Back out to Doncic, a little over a minute to go. Luka decelerates, comes up short. Green with the rebound, and we're going to have an offensive foul. Things went sideways. For the Mavericks, starting with that air ball by Doncic. And this right here, these are the moments when you see your big fella who's missed more games, or who's almost missed more games than he's played in, Come on, diving man. on the floor, kicking out the Matisse Thibel sprints, and follows it up. This is the MVP effort. This Talk is how it. you lead a team. You put your body, you put everything on the line. This is a random day in a snowy February, and he's diving on the floor like this is game seven of the finals. And beat in three-point territory. 15-footer. Or halfway down and out. He's really improved his mid-range shooting percentage over the last couple of years, too. Doncic around Thibel. Got his own rebound. Playing peekaboo. Got it to go. Oh, they went for the okey-doke. 
He's just so quick down there with the ball fakes, the little jab, just enough to be able to shoot floaters. They had a two for one, but they're going to run one here. About a 10 second difference between the shot clock and game clock. 76 is up by nine. Seth Curry off the beat screen. Good offense for the three. Hey, coming up on the toy to halftime, next streak continuing in the wrong direction. Michael Lees and Shanae Blumake in the studio with it for you. Doncic double team. They almost turned him over. Nice trap call by Doc Rivers there from midcourt. Yeah, the goal there is to make Boban be the playmaker, but I will say this. Since Boban came in the game, Joel Embiid has shot three jumpers. One three that he made, two pull-ups. So what he's done is, is uh, Boban has forced Joel to go away from the basket, and that's really affected his game. Now, he can still beat you from there, but you can see the impact. 